like a blog on Lee Chess by Navarro. Let's see. Bad statisticians can sometimes be worse than no statistics. Different people enjoy different things. Okay. Uh, Grandmaster Kramnik has recently published another controversial tweet on cheating entitled Tuesdays. Oh, great. More, more nonsense. Here we go from Kramnik. Another tweet. Luckily, luckily, I don't, I, I don't pay attention to this. So this is the only time I'm going to see a tweet. Another piece of stats, 2024, all cheating Tuesdays, accuracy level in centipons and situations players had less than 10 seconds on the clock. Average of minimum 700 such moves performed. Leaderboard top 12. Enjoy. Okay. So accuracy of playing titles Tuesday with 10 seconds left. And this, again, this, this looks like another cherry pick statistic as always. Um, where it's like people people find great moves with less than 10 seconds. Of course, as with everything Kramnik says, I guarantee you this does not take into account whether these were basic end games or what was going on at all in the various games. But let's dive further into the into the article. Okay, so we have this tweet. Okay, who do we have? We've got Goldsev, Christopher Yu, former prodigy, Frederick Svein, Bortnik, CKG Chess, Dropstone, MSB2, Daniel Naroditsky, Grishchuk, Bojan, and Magus Carlson. Now, actually, I'm kind of surprised that for the first time ever in one of Kramnik's tweets, I'm not actually in here, shockingly. I would have expected myself to be in here. That's surprising that I'm not, because I feel like when I'm under 10 seconds, I actually play, um, play great chess. But let's keep going. Here we go. All right, what do we have? This is David Navarro saying, I did not enjoy it at all. When I saw it first, I felt shocked as if someone had hit me in the head with a hammer. I quickly wrote an official complaint to FIDE and only slept for three hours the following night. Now, a couple of things to be point that should be pointed out. This is actually sort of the, the real problem with the whole thing, um, which is that when you see this stuff, everyone's like, oh, ignore cram, it doesn't matter, whatever. But inevitably, people actually see this stuff. And when someone like David Navarro sees it, you're like, what the heck is going on? Why is Kramnik suddenly accusing me of cheating? Like, it's absolutely insane. Um, and I'd also point out that when people say ignore it, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I've said this before actually as well, which is this even affected me. Like when Cranley started all this nonsense at the very beginning, um, you know, I was playing the chess champions tour in Toronto and actually I did very poorly in that event and it was 100% directly related to this. Cause you see this stuff and you're like, what the heck is going on? What's wrong with this guy? But let's, let's dive into the action anyway. Okay. Uh, also, I point out it's very good that um, it's very good that Navarro filed a complaint to FIDE. I'm going to be honest; like I've considered all the different various things over time. I mean, I've considered um, I mean, I've considered legal action against Kramnik. I would also say I've considered filing an ethics complaint against him. But at the end of the day, like you can do this, but where is it really leading? Kramnik is someone who no longer plays chess professionally, and even even if he were to get sanctioned, I don't really think that's going to stop him from doing this because he's he's on this path where there's no point of return. I would say. So let's keep going. Um, however, having said that, it's going to be interesting because if Navarre did file a complaint, this is probably an ethics complaint with FIDE, and I'm wondering if FIDE is going to do anything about it. But let's let's go through the rest of the block. Okay. Several days have passed, and I still feel unwell about it and find it hard to focus on other topics properly. I find the post pretty offensive, given the context cheating Tuesday, some tacit assumption that the statistics or this statistic is substantially linked to cheating. Other statements of Jim Kramnik on Title Tuesday. Okay. All right. Whom exactly is Mr. Kramnik accusing? And if he accuses just a few players from the list, why does he mention the others in connection with Cheating Tuesdays, which is insulting? Not being on Twitter, I found it reasonable to present my objections here. Okay. The tweet is somewhat puzzling. Grandmaster Kramnik speaks of centipons or centi centipons or cantipons, to use his own word, yet I'm not sure what the numbers on the right mean. Are they percentages? There are also other inaccuracies. Is it good that GM Kramnik at least take players' approximate strength, approximately measured by FIDE ratings, into account, but he is inaccurate in this respect. Mentioning GM Frederick Svein rated 2636 in classical chess as an international master. International master, nice. Is he? Oh, Frederick Svein, he's not an IM, he's a GM. He's, he's legitimately a good GM. This guy's a good GM. Frederick Svein is like 26 third GM from Germany. He and his brother Rasmus are really good players. Um, all right, let's keep going. Okay. Frederick has not played much FIDE rated blitz, so his blitz rating is too low, yet he participated in several OTB over the board blitz terms in December 2023 and performed well there. When one accuses people publicly, one should at least try to be as precise as possible. Good point. Um, my results. As for my results, or as for myself, I have been playing similarly well and similarly quickly in my OTB Rapid and Blitz events with slightly better results over the board than online. There are also many OTB games where I played well with less than 10 seconds left. If my position is slightly higher in Title Tuesdays than in OTB tournaments, it is only because I only play Title Tuesdays when feeling moderately well or very well. 
While I agree on participation in OTB events, much in advance, and usually do not withdraw even if I suddenly fall ill or feel unwell for other reasons. Wow, and this is what's so sad about it, because you, you see someone like David Navarro, who honestly is one of the nicest GMs. I would say out of GMs for 2,700 plus, I think he's probably the nicest GM that I know of. And here you have him literally doing exactly what should not be happening, which is he feels the need to try and justify his results instead of the situation where Kramnik has to prove what he's saying. Kramnik basically gets allowed, is allowed to say all this stuff, and then people feel like they have to defend themselves against it. And what are you going to do? Because he keeps doing it over and over again. Even when you do this, he keeps going. So this is really the problem is that now you see this guy, David Navarra, who's basically trying, he's, he's basically like just, he feels like he has to justify himself because of this. And this is ultimately the problem with it and why I hope that if he did file an ethics complaint with FIDE that some action is taken because this is the problem. This is ultimately the problem is that everybody, then they see it, this, they see this attack and what can they do? It's like you have Navarra literally giving his results in Title Tuesday here. And it's just so, it's so unacceptable that we're, we're, we're in such a situation. But Let's keep going. My average in this period was very slightly below 8 out of 11. It is a decent score, yet nothing special, and I did not win a single prize. All of those are early title Tuesdays, as I am mostly too tired in the evening, and even more on the days after an evening online tournament. Okay. I do not play title Tuesdays when feeling unwell, when playing an OTB tournament, before important events, and so on. Altogether, I played Title Tuesday for about 30 times in my life, always finishing between 7 and 9 points out of 11 games, with an average somewhere between 7.5 and, and 8 points. I once won $200 for fourth place, and that is all. See, this is this is this is what's what's so so bad about the whole thing is that people are like, just ignore it, doesn't matter, but it affects everybody. It even affected me initially when it happened. Um, and that's really the problem. That that's that's ultimately the problem. As for OTB chess, I am a three-time European Blitz champion. I was extremely lucky once and in exceptionally good form twice, but these results are still better than those in Title Tuesday. It is true that I had a very good period in Title Tuesday from November 2023 to February 2024, possibly because I played more Blitz and less standard chess then. And even this is so sad to see too, because you see this? He's like, he's literally feeling like he has to justify his good results in Title Tuesday because of what Kramnik is doing. You see this? It's like, he's, he's literally feels like he has to justify this three-month period where he was doing well. And this this is the tragedy in the whole thing. This is really the tragedy is that everybody who says to ignore it, these top players can't ignore it. You see it and you're just like you're like WTF, what's going on? Um and this is this is the problem. So like you see him again, he's like, I played well possibly because I played more blitz and less standard. And it's like that's again, it's having to justify yourself. You're having to justify yourself when you shouldn't have to justify yourself because Kramnik is not actually doing anything worthwhile. It's a bunch of garbage. That's all there is to it. Um, but let's keep going. Um there was no breaking point, no accusation, no warning, no call to Zoom between January 30th and February 6th, nor elsewhere. It is not unusual to have fluctuations of form like this. Exactly. Um, now, what he's referring to here with this, um, the no call to Zoom is at chess.com. Um, they have you go on a uh, go on a Zoom call if they're suspicious. Um, I think Levy had to go on a Zoom call once, right? Or something like that, but let's keep going. It is normal for sports people to have ups and downs. Even Grandmaster Kramnik had better and worse periods in his great career. Given that he knows very well how unpleasant and insulting it is to be accused without proper evidence, I think he should be more careful in his statements, especially when he publishes them on social media. Now, this is Navarra being as nice as you possibly can on this topic, because this is simply the reality. Kramnik knows full well what he's doing, and he knows full well that it's wrong, and yet he keeps doing it because he can't admit that he's wrong. He just he needs that he needs that validation or something along those lines, and so he keeps going down this rabbit hole and he keeps accusing people over and over and over again. Um so this is just this is just the reality. Um, and I love how Navarro is saying he, he should be more careful. Like, it's not about being careful. Kramnik knows full well what he's doing, and um, he, he knows full well what he's doing, and it's, it's intentional at this point. There's no doubt about it. Um, so let's keep going. Kramnik's metric does not work. Grandmaster Kramnik does not explain his methods in his tweet. Of course, he'll never explain them because it's complete rubbish. Yet they somehow seem to indicate that a very low ratio of blunders made with 10 seconds or less left can be very suspect, especially in the case of lower-rated players. This interpretation is mine and might be inaccurate. A blunder can be defined in various ways, and I do not know the details of its analysis. The metric chosen by GM Kramnik looks very strange. Now, I'm going to tell you also, you know, having seen all this stuff now for, for quite a few months, my perception of this is this is a 
This is a typical um, thing that you sometimes see out of Russia where you see where you see it's like you spread all these little points and you try to confuse people. So it's like you say this, this, this. So all these different things to try and sow the seeds of doubt in people's mind, which is why you see all these random metrics that make no sense at all. It's just like, well, this is weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. And then it's like, well, you have all these weird points. So obviously something's wrong. Um, that That's how I perceive it. Is that I think that's what Kramnik is doing at this point. It's just literally throw out all these random things, and you're just hoping that you sow the seeds of doubt, and enough people will listen to you. But fortunately, I do think most people at this point have actually completely ignored it, and they realize that what he's doing is very, very destructive, both for himself, but also for chess as a whole. So um, let's let's keep going with the blog. It says um, the metric chosen by Kramnik was strange. I guess that we all know the cheaters who make every move in two to five seconds, play like a strong GM, and when getting low on time start playing quickly, dropping pieces left and right. Such abusers would end up at the, at the opposite end of GM Kramnik's table at, the, at its very bottom rather than at the top. Okay. Given that there, there are quite some such players in online chess, I think that GM Kramnik's metric is pretty bad at determining cheaters. It is actually even worse. Imagine a hypothetical situation that you have nine that you invite nine such cheaters and one honest player who has an average time consumption for a three one blitz event. The only honest player will be who will be placed first equals most suspect according to GM Kramnik's metric, way ahead of the others who drop pieces left and right with a few seconds. Absurd. Perhaps GM Kramnik is trying to detect players who are using bots on their computers, thus being able to get hints in one second or less. But these players can simply escape his statistics by playing their games quickly enough to avoid severe time troubles. And this is also really painful to read because, again, he's, he's Navarro being the nice guy that he is, he's literally trying as hard as he can to, like, give Kramnik the benefit of the doubt. That's what's so painful about reading this. Like, even here, it's like he's trying to detect players who are using bots on their computers. It's not, it's not about cheating anymore. It's not about cheating. It's, it's, simply about, um, it's, it's simply about a vendetta towards, like, online chess, towards me, obviously, as well as others. Um, it's just this vendetta, you know, this vindictive vendetta, I guess you could say, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um... And it's sad. It's very, very sad to see, actually. It's very sad. But Navarre, even here, he's trying to give Kramnik the benefit of the doubt. He's trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, even though Kramnik knows full well what he's doing is ridiculous. So let's keep going. All right. Fight against online cheating is necessary, and we should use programs like Zoom as well as good statistics to determine better who is playing fair and who is not, to prevent or, or at least reduce both cheating and ungrounded accusations. Public accusations based on highly problematic statistics do not make the situation any better and can also cause unnecessary pain. Thank you for reading this. And this is like, this is, um, um, it says, P.S., the author is a grand master with a master's degree in logic. Okay. Um, but this is what you see here. You, you see that, I mean, like, you, you see this, and it's like Navarro is still, he's always trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's such a nice guy. Um, whereas I think most people would do anything but that. And, um, yeah, it's just very sad to see. Very, very, very sad to see, um, where things are. And it's, I mean, if Navarro did file an ethics complaint with FIDE or whatever he did, I'm really curious to see if FIDE is going to, going to say anything. Cause at this point, I mean, it's, it's way overdue that we, that we hear something. So who knows? Uh, I mean, I obviously feel terrible for Kramnik. I feel terrible, or not Kramnik, sorry. I obviously feel terrible for Navarro. Nice little, um, nice little, uh, nice little slip by me, but, yeah, I feel terrible for Navarro. I do. I mean, you, you see a guy here who's like, he feels like he has to justify himself because you have a former world champion who puts out the stat. Again, another one of these random stats where anybody can, can assume this, that, or the other thing. And then he's going to hide and say like, well, I wasn't accusing him of cheating.